Hello folks and welcome to Four Season Backpacking. Please subscribe for the latest outdoor adventure videos. Okay, morning folks. I've just got um, some water on the boil because I'm just about to make a uh, coffee with my favorite coffee bags as you always, um, if you have seen my videos, you guys will know. And I'm gonna have some noodles, my favorite noodles with some uh, John West uh, tuna. And I've got my organic brown sugar in here. Okay, so that's come to the boil now. So I pour that water in for my coffee. Okay, so I poured the hot water in. There's my coffee bag in there. Now it's just a matter of waiting for it to cool down and not being clumsy like I normally am and knock the cup over and um, destroying the warmth of my sleeping bag. So I've got the uh, GoPro um, 7 out there on time lapse and I'm filming this on the GoPro 8. Okay, time to take the coffee bag out. So I've got my brown sugar in there. I don't put any uh, milk in my coffee. Okay folks, so now it's time for my noodles. Got the water on the boil again. Um, I just did some droning. Um, the light is not the best, but obviously the best time of the day normally is in the morning, which um, I really didn't want to get up this morning, but um, when you're into droning, that's the best time normally to um, do droning. It's in the morning, no one's about, and the light is better. Um, in the afternoons, especially this time of year, the light the sunset's quite early and there still could be people about so yeah i don't want to annoy annoy people doing my droning uh, so i try to avoid it when there's people about the thing i like about this uh cooker i'm using the spider kosovo st spider stove is that the base of it it's really like when i'm stirring um it's really steady you know it's not going to tip over it's really solid um, as with those other little stoves, like it's just it's just not like that. So often have I like spilled, you know, lost water, food onto the floor, like uh, just because they're just so unstable. But this is just so stable. Um, you know, I've been using st uh, camping stoves for over 30 years, and after all the stoves I've used, this this is definitely my favourite. Okay folks, so I've got the uh, tent down now and I'm back on the way on the uh, St Cuthbert's way. Um, coming down the other side of the uh, saddle now. As you can see, it's an absolutely breathtaking view on this absolutely beautiful morning after the uh, heavy rain of last night. So nice walking through this uh, forest, you can hear all the Birds waking up, singing, talking to each other. 
beautiful. Well, so far, folks, I'm really enjoying this uh, trail. It's so peaceful at the moment. It's probably the best time of year to do it as well. Um, it's still just before the spring. We're still in winter. That hedgerow. Quite muddy along here. Path's getting a bit more muddy now. Could be worse, could be deep peat bogs. It's a bit slippy though. You know, if you're a video vlogger like me on these uh, hikes and adventures, at some point, if you, especially if you're using a drone, uh, action cameras, another camera, at some point, you're on your uh, event. Okay, <laughs> so ironically, I was uh, saying just before the battery ran out um, that you're gonna have to um, charge your um, batteries at some point, which is another reason why I carry lots of battery packs and spare batteries because you don't always get to a place where you can charge batteries. Now, I tend to charge my batteries up at um, libraries. Uh, which is normally free, just about all the time it's free and church, which I do make a donation if I use a plug in the church I make uh, uh, money for the electric and a donation as well but the, the real annoyance is and it's one of those things you have to do is you not only do you have to stop to charge your things sometimes you probably have to stop especially if you've got battery packs to stop a good couple of hours to charge stuff up and even then it probably it's not going to charge all your stuff up so um and my next stop i'm going to have to stop um at a place probably if i don't stop today the next place i'm definitely going to have to stop quite a good amount of hours to charge my gear up normally there's always something i forget to bring and on this occasion it's uh toothpaste but at the next stop um there's possibly a big co-op Okay folks, I just adjusted the settings because it's brighter now and I realise that um, the last couple of videos have probably been quite bright. This seems okay. How do you think? It's looking a little bit dark again. So I've got to alter the settings again. Coming up to that village now. Okay folks, so I'm just going to dump some of my rubbish now. Uh, there's a bin just before you get into the village. I want to keep the plastic bag. Yep, that's it. I don't know what this is. Looks like a drunk tank. There's one in Castle Kerry actually, Nick, where the train station you get to go to a Glastonbury Music Festival. Yeah, it's not a drunk tank, or well, it may used to have been, but um, who knows. Looks like some kind of um, spring water. Yeah, it's uh, sort of kind of like a spring water, um, I don't know what you'd call it, folly? Okay, it could be a drunk tank, an old drunk tank, it's got like a door on it. Anybody know? Okay, so it is a restored, it was restored in 2012. It's the 150th anniversary of the first public water supply in Bowden. So it's a water supply. And this is a war memorial. Okay, so it wasn't in this uh, village where the carp is, it's in the next one. This is a smaller village than the next one. Next one's about kilometres time, I think, or less. I should point out that this um, half of this walk is in um, Scotland and half of it is in England. At the moment, I started in the Scottish end, which starts at Melrose. And, oh Christ, where does it end? Oh, it ends at uh, Linda's Farm, Linda's Farm on the coast, which is in England, North Northumbrian, uh, coastline so essentially the um, entire hike is through the borderlands of England and Scotland this looks like a 
this part of the path it looks like an old uh, driver's track. Now, some people will say that it's down in a ditch like this because the amount of people have walked along it. Um, I doubt it. Well, I doubt it. Um, I don't know that for sure, but I doubt it myself. Um, I think it's been dug out like this uh, for whatever reason, maybe to keep out the wind, maybe to um, keep out of sight of uh, highwaymen. Um, but I doubt very much it's been worn into the ground this much. I mean, it would have to be, literally be so thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years old to do that, I would have thought. Well, guys, I'm so glad they put in a bridge on this bit. They fancy uh, crossing this um, river and getting wet feet. You probably can't see it, but there's a swing up there over the river, but I don't think it's normally this high. It's just because it was a lot of rain last night, so it's probably quite a shallow stream normally. So it's a little walk along the uh, river bank. There's a higher option if it's flooded. It's kind of flooded now, I guess, because of the rain last night. So we're coming up for the next village now, I think. Check that old barn out. It's beautiful, isn't it? I love it. So I'm in the town now where the carp's supposed to be. I'm sure I've been here before, probably have. I'm sure on the end to end, probably walked a good part of the, um, the uh, trail I'm doing now. Yeah, I've actually been through it before, definitely on the end to end trail. I recognise the little corner shop still open, even though there's a carp here. I don't know if this carp was here when I last come through. But there was an um, old building that's not been used for a long time. Um, it still had the bank sign on it, so it used to be a bank here, if I'm right. Okay, I've been to the co-op. Now I'm heading to leave this uh, village now. Looks like I'm about to pass under a some kind of A road. Um, yeah, it looks like a busy A road. Don't know if it's a motorway actually. Another bridge crossing. Well, folks, this is a nice uh, part of the track. Walking alongside the river here. At some point, I'm going to get to a suspension bridge, I believe, and go and see this abbey on the other side of the river. Um, and again, this, I've walked this before. I'm very sure of it when I walked end to end trail on Villa Groats to Land's End. It's lovely along here, I have to say. It's, it's funny, I was starting to get into a mindset thinking I'm getting uh, perhaps a little bit too old to be carrying such heavy loads. Um, but surprisingly, on this hike, I mean it is hilly. But it's not. It's not. It's not classed as a hard hike. This bag. It's like even with all the food added at the start, it's not a problem. I think it's because I've been taking um, the last week. I've been taking some protein powder as well while I've been doing my regular exercising. So I think that's. Uh, Built my muscles up a bit, perhaps. It's definitely not psychological because I never even thought of that till after I thought, hey, this is easy. Well, oh, maybe it must be, must be the protein powder. Okay, so heading down now towards the uh, suspension bridge, I can see it. It's de and that has definitely, definitely been visited on my end to end trail, Donna Groats to Land's End. Okay, folks, so. This is a video of me walking across the suspension bridge. Now this takes me to the other side of this uh, frighteningly big uh, river. There's been a lot of rain, so I hope this um, sus suspension bridge is safe. Because there's not a chance in hell I'll survive falling in there. I'm a very weak swimmer at the moment, by the way, folks. I, I learned to swim when I was five years old. But as I got older, I generally didn't, I haven't done much swimming. So now I would class myself as almost like I can't swim, but I'm going to have to get back into it again. Um, so I used to go surfing as well, and um, yeah, so I'm not, I'm not confident with uh, 
going in rivers, no, that's for sure. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go for swimming in the river at the moment because I'll probably drown. I mean, I can stay afloat for a bit, I'm not somewhere in the pool, I just find it incredibly hard to swim. So, yeah, I'm going to be leaving the river swimming for a little while. Okay, and I am going up here. which I do definitely remember this, walking John O'Groats to Land's End. I don't know if I looked at it properly, it was in a bit of a rush. I can't tell you much about this because I don't know what the hell it is, but I will put it up on the screen. This is incredibly steep. Well, there's the Abbey uh, Hotel, folks. Folks, unfortunately, it seems that you have to pay to enter this Abbey. It doesn't say a price, but the ticket office is down here. Um, now, there are plenty of things for me to see free on the way. If you do want to come and see it and pay, that's brilliant, you know. Um, not sure where the money goes to, but... Um, yeah, apparently you have to pay. Yeah, you have to pay. And it says, those ramps. And you have to pay. It is six pounds for me to go in there. I'm sure it's um, really cool to see. And if you can afford it, yeah, why not? I can't afford it. And there are plenty more things I can see, maybe even better, that are free. Um, so um, I won't be paying to go in sadly. It's a shame, but that's just the way things are. People have got to make a living, haven't they? This is probably more interesting than the Abbey. <laughs> but all that sort of like stuff going on it. Okay, so that thing I'm, I saw earlier on was um, a temple and it's called Temple of the Muses. How about that for a garden gate? So back at the temple again. Temple of the Muses, that sign said it was called. Well, I'm walking back across the uh, suspension bridge now. Um, for anybody who's thinking of going to the uh, Abbey Ruins over there, um, thinking it's free, it's not, so don't bother. Um, they don't tell you the price until you get to the ticket office, which is £6 for an adult. So if, you, if you're thinking it's free or cheap, don't bother. But um, if you don't mind paying £6 to see some ruins, um, then yeah, why not? But there are plenty of rooms around the country that you can see for free. I can definitely see the uh, the river along here. <laughs> Floods a lot along this path. I mean, it's what about four hours of rain last night. Um, I'm guessing I am walking along the Tweed now, the River Tweed. I don't think there'll be any chance of uh, crossing this river without a bridge. I mean, it's fast moving, it's deep, it's wide. <laughs> You'd just be swept right away. Thanks for the steps, guys. Look how fast flowing that river is. Okay, so I just stopped for a rest to uh, have lunch. Well, it's still morning, so I don't know why I'm calling it lunch. But uh brushed my teeth as well. Uh, hopefully, this path at some point does not go under the very fast flowing river I'm going along. It seems to be going up along here, but I don't know if it's going to be flooded anywhere further along the track. As you can tell, <laughs> yeah, probably one of the smallest bridges so far on the uh, trail. Well, so far, I'm definitely uh, recommending this uh, long distance trial to people, uh, experienced people and uh, long distance uh, people who have never done a long distance path before. So far, it's not, um, I won't say it's been uh, difficult. And uh, I've not seen anyone else hiking this uh, trail. I've seen dog walkers near the, the villages, the towns, whatever. But I've not seen anyone hiking this trail as a day hike or or um, as a hike as a whole as I'm doing. Okay, I think I'm nearing the uh, 
next uh, town or village now. Okay, so this is the town. I actually remember that building there. I'm pretty sure I do. Yeah, I thought it was at Undertaker's. So I definitely remember that from when I walked end to end John O'Groats. So I've definitely been along here before. But I know now that I was actually walking this way, not the way I'm walking. It's like the um, town hall over there. Yeah, this looks like a interesting name. It's almost Welsh. Well, folks, apparently it is potato day. Post office, fish and chips. Ah, oh, there might be a supermarket actually. Yeah, it's a McCall supermarket. Maybe I'll get some something else, I don't know. And there is the Union flag and the Scottish flag. Unionists. Oh, I remember this. From John O'Groats to Land's End. Can't believe it, that's actually been out of town. Looks like someone didn't agree with the last one though. It was cremated. So comes that time where I'm disposing of the rubbish correctly and not wasting, not wasting the plastic bag. Going in there. Keep the plastic bag for the next lot of rubbish. A little uh, kitten down there in the field. There it goes. Is he coming through? Hello! Well, I'm actually scared of cats, but he seems alright. Careful on this road, mate. Hope you're not going to follow me all the way. He lost. <laughs> seems to know where he's going. It, come, it comes at every long distance hike. You've got to walk through a golf club. So here comes the time of walking through the golf club. Doesn't seem very busy at the moment. Beware, golf in progress. Please do not cross the greens. Do not go in the bunkers. Keep dogs under control. Pick up your dog poo. The any other time I've actually seen a golf course not being used is probably in the Outer Hebrides. Um, but Obviously this is well kept, it's um, a used golf course. I've got to go up around this way, but to be honest, it looks a bit muddy. So this is the actual trail that goes along the side of the golf course. It's a hell of a river, the Tweed. For some reason, I always keep thinking it's like a, more of a stream, but it's not, look at it, it's like a raging torrent. Basically it's a, uh, and this bit is going right round in a loop as rivers do so I mean I could cut across well I can't cut across the fields there's no right away there's no paths uh, but basically I'm just going round right almost like going round in a circle um, the aim today is to get near Jedsburg uh, camp near there or I might camp near this monument which I remember when I was doing the end to end trail John O'Groats to Land's End it's basically um, a marker or a grave where this uh, there was a famous battle and a woman um, was in the battle and she fought even when her legs were cut off um, kept fighting that's the story anyway I think anyway we'll either see that today or tomorrow I know we'll definitely see that today but whether I'm camping I might walk farther in that or I might camp there there's some mud cliff face there along the river bank on the other side of the river we've got some rapids down here oh my god check out these rapids shame I can't send the drone over but there's someone's house over there so I can't check it out though So here it looks like we're going up across the road, right in the river, and probably down the other side of the river again. 
this sign's a little bit strange because we're supposed to be going down that way, yet it's pointing that way of the road. Got some uh, little rapids over there. Okay, well the next settlement along here is really small. It's not even a village, it's a hamlet I guess. However, there is remains of something. It actually might be remains of a church if it is, and that makes it a village, doesn't it? But it's uh, just uh, some remains. I think that's what the remains are anyway. Another bridge. All right, I remember seeing pictures of this. I remember walking past it before. Um, it's obviously spring water. Let me out! Let me out! Let me out! I can't get out! Let me out! <laughs> Where am I? Where am I? Let me out! So though these are early toilets. And this looks like one of those things that donkeys used to spin around, um, move around. This is in here, but it was, it's, it's open by the way. Looks like it was locked at one point, but the door's open now, so I'm looking. Probably should look at the uh, information sign before I do the video so I can tell you guys, which I'm going to look up, look at. But I might put obviously the information up before I show you this, if that makes any sense. Um, or I should even look at the guidebook I've got. Okay, when it said um, a modern convenience, I thought they meant like, you know, toilets. But apparently it's, um, it was a pump powered by the donkeys to um, take water up to the house up the hill. Um, you've got to feel sorry for the poor old donkey, haven't you? For us lazy humans. Oh, and now it's up the river bank. I think we're leaving the river now. Got up these steps. Oh. Okay. Old cemetery I've just found. There's supposed to be some uh, church remains here. It's quite old. It's not as old as some of the uh, old. Uh, Cemetery ruins I found. This guy means business. Look at him. These are uh, male sheep scare the hell out of me. Look at him, man. That's scary. You're like a werewolf. Like a, were a sheep version of a werewolf. Possibly a little bit too dark to film along here. I need to film the other way, I think. The impressive gravestones there in this uh, cemetery. I like this one here. So these are the old church ruins here. It's basically the base of the old church by the looks of it. A lot of these places, it's obviously been restored somewhat, you can tell. A lot of these places are like this and they just build them up and make them into this kind of like romantic ruin, which is not, it's not what it seems, you know. A lot of these ruins are highly maintained or even built up as a ruin. I think the skull and crossbones on the gravestone marks a plague victim. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm wondering what a skull on its own, maybe this has a crossbones as well, means. Is that a plague victim? And another bridge. It was nice today because of the rain last night, so the waters are all up high. 
the quality of the path along the river is actually surprisingly really good even though it's wet and slippy the path's good I don't feel like I'm going to go off the edge or anything with this big bag so yeah quite impressed with that another church yep another place I do remember now in fact I was looking at a picture of this just the other day when I'm I was walking as I always keep saying the end to end trail John of Groats to Land's End you will walk past this church if you follow that route let's have a look around the uh, burial ground here I don't think I did before when I come here looks like someone had a fair bit of money or some powerful influence to be buried in a well, it's probably like a whole family would you believe that I think that's the first blue bowels I believe they're blue bowels I'm not an expert on plants at all but um, that's the first ones I've seen this year I love the seat by this church uh, or the village name I guess almost looks like a train station seat there's a whole load about the uh, church here now if you want to um, know more about this church um, please do so by pausing your your um, pressing pause button I should say okay I'm in the village of Ma Markston Maxton and it's got a load of information here pause it if you want to read it um, some information about the church there and some information about the village itself here pause it if you want to read it um, a load of sort of like leaflet paraphernalia here it makes me laugh people looking out their windows and stuff when you walk through um, small places like this sometimes you know don't they realize there's like a national trail running through here <laughs> oh, they're probably just being friendly but it's kind of funny probably don't see that many people come through I suppose anyway everyone's been really friendly so far lovely flowers about at the moment so folks I've just got onto uh, Deer Street which is an ancient Roman road obviously you can't see any remains of the road but I'm actually walking where it was and uh, it's still a route as part of my trail and it would be almost 2,000 years old at least this route which would have been a Roman road okay I wish the Romans would sort out their uh, drainage system oh yeah oh okay <laughs> So 2,000 odd years ago, this was a Roman motorway. Hard to believe. Wonder what it was like back then. Anyone know what this is all about? Is it a boundary stone or something else? It's on the um, ancient Roman road. So I remember all this. I was walking the other way, I believe, when I did the end to end trail. I'm really loving it along this bit of the uh, Deer Street. It's lovely with these uh, trees as well. Well folks, I've actually just met somebody who's doing the Southern Upland Way and just doing this bit of track uh, as a loop and this is going to end up walking all the way to Cape Wrath That's one hell of a hike Travel's a bit flooded at the moment That's beautiful isn't it? Absolutely stunning Ah. The light's beautiful at the moment. It's really stunning. It's 
still on Deer Street, the ancient Roman road. Oh, I'm loving it along here, especially now the sun's come out. It's so cool walking along this ancient road. Oh, it looks like there's some obstructions on the way here. It's looking more like a course of a road now, along this bit. Okay, so still on Deer Street. Um, Jegsburg. I'm trying to get close to Jegsburg as possible. Um, hopefully there's a place to camp where I'm thinking of. And another bridge to add to my collection of bridges. Ice along here. Beautiful. And another bridge. Doesn't look that old actually. So now I'm heading down towards a suspension bridge. Um, and a dovecot that's been restored apparently down by the river that's an old looking tree it's got humongous it's got roots on it Not even the trees have lights check that out apparently there's otters in this river and this time of day as well. Well folks, it seems there's some kind of a mystery sort of game here. It says go back to the bridge, across, back over, however, your hunt is not over. Turn left, it's not it's like straight on, and keep on walking. Walk to the stile, the wooden steps near the gate, find the clue, it's fate. And it's got this. I'll stick it back where I found it, that's where it was. Someone's probably must be playing some kind of game. There you go folks, the sign for it, Deer Street, St Cuthbert's Way. Okay, I was expecting it to be a bit more uh, in the open than this. Apparently around this uh, suspension bridge you can see otters about this time in the evening. Oh, I'm going to be quiet maybe. <laughs> Yeah, me speaking probably doesn't help, does it? Oh, I see something in the water actually, on the other side. I'm gonna sit down on the other side when I get there. Oh my God, <laughs> this bridge is really, really rickety. I hope they check this bridge for safety. A squeaking and a churning. And as I said, my swimming abilities is not very good at the moment. Plus I'm wearing a great big bag. Yeah, well that's interesting. Can't see any at the moment. So yeah, I'm gonna... I think I'm gonna put my bag down here for a second. Have a look around. And if I see anything, obviously I'll stick the camera on. Four rapids on the tweed. Look at that. Looks like the water might be going down a little bit from this morning. Well the river's quite fast flowing now, but look how low down it is compared to where I am now. That tree must have been washed up here, where that is now. That tree does not belong there, that's just, that must have been washed up in the flood. Okay guys, this is not porridge, it's my protein powder. I've only just got the tent up, I'm camped by the, right by the river Tweed. It's in fast flow at the moment. It's, hopefully it doesn't rain again. I don't want to get washed away. Uh, just This is really hard to mix in, by the way. And I don't make a habit of protein powder. I only have it every now and then. Um, I think it's all right every now and then, but um, I personally wouldn't take it every day of my life. But for the hike, it's, it's brilliant. And sometimes when I'm working out, a hard workout, I'll take it. Otherwise, I'll just have a
Thanks guys for watching the video. Hope you're all well and I hope to see you all again soon.